Thanks for taking the time to join me on my channel, Nigel's View on Things. How you doing? How you keeping? Hope everybody's safe and sound where you are. I'm going to be going over a few news stories that have actually caught my eye, and I think you might quite enjoy some of these. Something a little bit different. But also, I need to say, people have forgotten what our skies used to look like. I mean, looking at this picture, I've already posted this, but is this normal? 10 minutes before I took this picture, our sky was a completely different colour. It was a neon green. We can see the green over here. But this is a neon orange sunset. Really? I've never seen this before in my life. And many people are starting to wake up to the fact that things are wrong. But there's still many people that have forgotten what our skies used to look like. And I think that's down to technology. What I would like to say really in that respect is technology has made us lazy. The day I got a mobile phone is the day that I started to forget how to remember things like phone numbers. People used to tell me a phone number and I could remember. Now I really haven't got a clue what my mobile number really is. You understand what I'm trying to say. It's hard enough to try and remember what you had for lunch yesterday. Anyway, any rate, I've come across a film that really does say a lot. I'll leave the links to it in the description box down below. It's on YouTube and it's made by the filmmakers Dust. It's not scary, it's about 10 minutes long, but it's very, very relevant to what I'm looking at in today's society throughout the world, how people's memories are very, very short. Go over, have a look. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. I um, saw the poster in your window. Irresistible, isn't it? Said the holiday was free. What's the catch? Here's a story that actually caught my eye. Black hole photographed on Jupiter. This is from News Hub. I'll leave the links to everything that we're going to look at in the description box down below. Nice and simple for everybody to find. And the next articles from the Express. Quite interesting indeed. This is about a planet that's 110 light years away. An Earth-like planet. How in the hell can you see that? Because I have trouble seeing to the end of my garden. But never mind. As we can see down here, stunning new images shot by NASA's Juno spacecraft appears to show a massive black hole on the surface of Jupiter. They've been up there some time, two different spacecraft, and what they're trying to tell me is this is the first time that this object has been photographed, an eclipse basically, and the photographs were taken earlier this month as Juno's elliptical orbit took it close to the gas giant, only 8,000 K from the top of its clouds. Stunning picture of, yeah, of course it is, but rather than abyss from which there's no escape, Jupiter's latest feature is just a shadow cast by one of its moons and has blocked out the sun during an eclipse. Well, that does make sense, but I find it quite strange that I haven't actually photographed this object before or this uh, eclipse before. Io is about the same size as Earth's moon, while the black spot is referred to as a shadow, it's same as a solar eclipse on Earth. Due to its massive size difference between Earth and Jupiter, it appears more like a shadow. Really? That is an eclipse. Universe Today reports. A gold star for you, go top of the class. Last week, it was reported a volcano is set to erupt on Io. Very interesting. All the planets seem to be, yeah, never mind. Jupiter's other distinctive feature, its giant red spot, is a storm that is expected to dissipate one day. News Hub. And down here, we can see a very sad face on that news. Here's the article from the Express and a couple of bits in here that floated my boat that I really would like to share with you. NASA News, what is that giant black hole on Jupiter? Juno Cam snaps stunning pictures. Well, I was thinking to myself, Juno Cam, I've got one of those in front of my car. It's called a dash cam and it costs 25 notes. I was thinking to myself, I should email NASA and ask them how much 
their camera costs. I think the response would be something similar to, Dear Nigel's view on things, thank you very much for your inquiry as to the price of the camera. It's the best thing we ever bought off Banggood and the best 25 bucks we ever paid. As you can see, the pictures are stunning and out of this world. Tom, best regards. Thanks, Tom. Really appreciate it. Any anyway, rate, down here, NASA. Well, you know, when people write an article, the implications of what they're saying should really be thought about before they write, because many people could interpret what they're reading as a little bit wrong. Let me demonstrate what I'm saying. NASA's Juno spacecraft snapped this incredible image of a giant black hole cropping up on the surface of Jupiter. The word NASA and cropping really shouldn't come into the same sentence. I'm just saying. So just down here, there's some interesting articles and pictures and things to read and adverts and all that sort of thing. As you can see there, what a wonderful picture that is. As we go down, we've got more adverts and it tells us a little bit about members of the public are invited to dive into the Juno Cam directory and have a go at processing their own images. I'm just saying. And then we've got this lovely picture of this. If that's there and that's there, who's taking that picture? Because we've got a picture of that somewhere at any rate, yeah, whatever. I'm just saying. Then we've got this picture. Uh, is it actually a picture or is it an artist's rendition maybe? But the interesting article down here is this one. NASA said Juno's principal goal is to understand the origin and evolution of Jupiter. Underneath its dense cloud cover, Jupiter safeguards secrets of their fundamental processes and conditions that governed our solar system during its formation. As a primary example of a gas planet, Jupiter can also provide critical knowledge for understanding the planetary system being discovered around other stars. So there you go. That, I think, is very, very important. Understanding how things come together. But then, just up here, let's go back up a little bit. And as you can see, it says, once the mission comes to an end, NASA will deal with the spacecraft to burn up in Jupiter's atmosphere. Way to go, NASA. Let's pollute another planet. Yet again, are we not happy with polluting our own Earth? I'm just saying. Another article from the Express, a daily rag, a tabloid, if you like, and they're very high quality. That's what my lawyers told me to say. At any rate, the reason that we're having major earthquakes around the world is because of earthquake warning, moon drifting from Earth, which could have major consequences. So there you go. Now, you know, the reason that there's been an increase in major earthquake activity is because our moon is actually moving away from our Earth. What other reason could there be? And as you can see, plenty of articles and plenty of things to read and lots of pictures to look at and such wonderful adverts. We're going to have a look here. Earth rotation is slowing as our planet uses energy to keep the tide ahead of the moon's orbit. Our planet keeps the tide slightly ahead of the lunar satellite, which keeps the ecosystem in check, sloshes the oceans from continent to continent. However, to do this, the Earth uses kinetic energy, something which is finite. This means the Earth's orbit is slightly slowing down as it runs out of energy, and the consequences could be catastrophic. Hmm. A slower rotating globe leads to a strong and more frequent earthquake. Exactly why this is the case is unclear, but the experts believe it could be down to changes in the Earth's core, which ultimately has an effect on the surface. Nothing to do with something coming towards us at all. Any anyway, rate, just down here, we can see there's a lovely picture of a big crack. Hmm. The correlation between Earth's rotation and earthquake activity is strong and suggests that there's going to be an increase in the number of intense earthquakes. And if you're wondering how far the moon is actually moving away from the Earth, it is 3.8 centimetres, a very, very precise measurement, don't you think? 
over a very vast distance. I hope they've got a very long tape measure. At any rate, 1.5 inches per year, 3.8 centimeters. That causes earthquakes, you know. Before we leave this article, I need to go to this picture again. I'm very, very disappointed because there is no moonshine. Very, very disappointed. We get to see Earthshine on the moon, but we don't see moonshine on the Earth. Never mind. I don't know about you, but every time I open my news feed, what do I get to see? A story about an asteroid and many other stories to go with it. They're trying to tell us something and it all seems to be happening at the same time. I think you can agree. Three in a row for the Express, so can you see a patting sort of emerging? They're just trying to get the news out there. Of course they are. NASA unveils 600 million planetary defense system after devastating asteroid slips net. Well, I think this happened a few times. Judging by the amount of videos that are online and those fireballs, it seems to be increasing. And what would you expect to see? Well, you know, lovely story about black holes. Um, they're black. You can't see them. How can they? Yeah, at any rate, it makes no difference. How to stop your dog barking. Lovely advert. Razors, even better still. And it tells you all these different stories down here. The new infrared telescope will be based on a previous concept, NEO CAM, which was originally proposed in 2013. The failure of the project is something NASA Associate Administrator Mr. Sakurabebun said that wrong, was one of the biggest screw ups of my job and pronouncing his name. In order to receive more funding, the telescope is classified as a planetary defense rather than a scientific mission. 15 years ago, NASA was tasked by the US Congress to detect 90% of near-Earth objects in EOs larger than 459 feet, 140 meters wide by the year 2020. So, as you can see, the year 2020, well, not 2025 or 2030, that year seems to be popping up all over the place. 2020. Are they trying to say something? But they're looking for needles in a haystack, and there's many needles that they're never going to see, but there's many things that they've discovered that they're not going to actually tell us. But, of course, that couldn't be possible now. A story from Big Thinker Smarter Faster. Experts decide to try knocking an asteroid off course. And really, what could go wrong with that? Sorry, we got it wrong and we, yeah, there's an object on its way. 2020, I guess. Before the next big dangerous incoming rock arrives, a NASA, is there more than one? NASA ESA project plans to try and change the path of an extraterrestrial body. The target is the moon of a binary asteroid almost 7 million miles away. Science is getting serious about planetary defence. And as you can see, you've got all the bump down there. I'm not going to read it to you. But there is just one little bit just here that made me giggle. And it's just here. Back here on Earth. In the face of impending climate change, they just needed to get that in. Another story that keeps on popping up my feed would be solar storms, CMEs, and as such, the Express wins again. Number four for the Express. The Express is trying to get the word out there. Of course they are. They're telling us that our sun is causing a little bit of a problem. Space weather warning. Earth is currently being battered by a solar storm. This is a very, very short story, and there is a couple of bits in here. However, the consequences could be far more serious than the appearance of northern or southern lights. Additionally, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere. That was easy for me to say, which could lead to higher than normal electricity in power lines, resulting in electrical transformers and power station blowouts. Have we not seen those before? But is that our sun causing that problem. The higher amounts of radiation can also leave people vulnerable to cancer. But we're seeing a great big explosion of cancer throughout the world. It's becoming just like a common cold now. 
This article goes along with our last one, and this is all about CMEs. It's from The Sun, and I find it quite ironic that a newspaper called The Sun is talking about CMEs from The Sun. Yeah. A devastating storm of solar radiation that wreaks havoc on our planet is inevitable. Space scientists have warned the disaster-inducing event could hit us at any moment and threatens to cause widespread blackouts and knock out our phone networks. If you've got a blackout, you ain't got no phones. Just saying. A quick question for you. Could you tell the difference between a natural CME and a man-made CME? There isn't no difference at all. The end result's going to be the same. The lights are going to go out. All your electrical devices are not going to work. We've been told that this event is going to be natural. It's from our sun. What about another scenario? Somebody looks up in the sky and suddenly spots something that shouldn't be there. Many people start noticing this same thing. They take pictures, they take videos of this object and post it all over social media. They really don't want that to happen. A CME is a good way of actually turning everything off. But we're being told this is going to be a natural thing. Maybe it's going to be interaction between the planet that's coming and our sun. And I have no doubt about that in any way, shape or form. Electrical universe. So here you go. Here's the article. Our sun regularly pumps out bursts of highly charged particles known as coronal mass ejection. CMEs, low at few, are powerful enough to disrupt life on earth and you can see the little man there the little face oh look he looks so sad any rate here's the article please go over and read it yourself dinosaur are they actually trying to tell us something 17 minutes into this video so i'm going to actually make this the last one from the daily mail mysterious gel like substance of unusual color on the far side of the moon is studied by china's lunar rover as the nation seeks to identify the bizarre material. And it's not so much the story, it's what I actually get to see. I just don't understand what I'm looking at. According to uh, this paper or these pictures, we're looking at the moon. I think you can agree. Badly stitched together just there. But what is this object just here? It looks like a piece of paper in a crater. I think you can agree. Yeah, I'm not really too... Is that somebody's uh, dinner note? That's all I've got to say. And down here it tells you everything you need to know about it. And uh, great advert. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Here's a closer view of this bit of paper on the moon. Where did it actually come from? Was the um, rover making notes and it dropped out of its pocket here's an interesting picture and you've got to ask yourself this one question why does this rover a multi-million pound rover that's made by china that's on the moon remind me of a badly put together flat packed drop leaf table on wheels hey it looks like it's had a front end smash it looks like it's been put together in somebody's shed for 25 quid what is this one of those uh flick down phones you know the old ones the keypads behind what's that on top that actually reminds me of one of those old type phones the ones with the diner that took ages to make the call oh i'm beginning to see something here we can see that it's got a satellite dish it's got aerials it's a mobile phone on wheels. What a great idea. Mobile phone on wheels. What will they think of next? Hey Kit, order me a pizza. Yes, Michael. Well, voice activated as well. Isn't technology just a wonderful thing? 19 minutes into this video and I think we should call it a day. But everybody should remember, let's not worry about tomorrow. Let's worry about and love and live today that's the most important thing we need to prepare because there is something that's going to happen that's around the corner i mean you wouldn't drive your car without a spare wheel well now <laughs> yeah nowadays you don't even get a spare wheel never mind that's a different story anyway that's all i've got for you now 
Much love, much peace, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.